So I recently took Pistol 1 and Pistol 2 with Warrior Poet Society, and I learned a great deal. The first video I want to do is go over what gear to pack if you're going to travel cross-country for one of these training classes. The class was an awesome time, but I found I ended up not needing a lot of what I ended up packing. Let's start with transportation. I flew for this class. Last week I released a general video on tips for flying with guns. So check out that video if you're curious about the procedures for air travel, with guns for taking classes or for competition. For pistol classes, I like to travel with this Harbor Freight Apache 4800 case. I did a video back in November about how to set one of these up, so if you don't have a quality hard shell case yet, go back and check out that video. I ended up only packing two pistols. I brought my EDC Glock 26 with a Hollow Sun EPS. The slide milled by Maple Leaf Arms in Texas. I also brought my PSA dagger that you've seen in a lot of previous videos as my backup in case something went down with my Glock 26. I brought these two pistols because these are the two pistols that I carry every day. I could have brought some of my competition pistols, but because Pistol 1 and Pistol 2 are practical shooting courses for every day, rather than competition focused, I wanted to run the classes with what I actually carry day in and day out. Having two pistols is a good idea just in case your primary pistol goes down during the class. As they say, two is one and one is none. A shout out to Maple Leaf Arms. I had my slide cut to mount this Hollow Sun EPS red dot and I had the work done on a really tight timeline. They accommodated me and got the slide back to me super quick, which allowed me to shoot this gun for this class. Lastly, I filled out every space in the case with extra magazines or with tools and cleaning supplies. I threw a range finder in here just for kicks because I had the space. Although I didn't use it even once in the class. Guys, this is an advantage to having Glock pattern pistols. They all take the same magazines, so you can stack magazines deep, which comes in super handy for these classes. It minimizes the time you're spending reloading, so that gives you full time to pay attention to what is going on in the class. Note that I'm not traveling with any ammo. It's a bit easier to fly with guns if you aren't packing the ammo with you. TSA will give you a much easier time, and it seems like they are less likely to cut your locks. Aside from the fact that it makes the counter staff less nervous, the main reason you might want to avoid traveling with ammo is that 50 pounds weight limit on luggage applies. You're also restricted to 11 pounds of ammunition, which may or may not be enough for the classes you are taking. With the heavy case, the guns, the accessories, you quickly approach that 50 LBS. I had the luxury of going up to take this class with my brother, so I simply had the case of 9mm shipped up to his house. If you can avoid traveling with ammo, it may be a good idea to do so. Many instructors optionally will let you pre-purchase the ammo and have it available at the class when you get there. I bought a few locks. They don't need to be anything crazy. Just make sure they are beefy enough to keep the case secure. Only law enforcement has the right to open this container and, ideally, they'll call you over the loudspeaker if something needs further inspection. Otherwise, they'll cut your locks. Check my previous video on air travel with guns for tips on how to ensure everything with travel goes smoothly. Okay, so that's it for the guns and ammo. Let's go to my class EDC next. I'm flying southwest, so I get two bags. One bag will be my gun case. The other bag is going to be this suitcase. I'll be checking a bag as this bag will have a bunch of my accessories in it. I'll have clothes. I'll have a few holsters for the guns I'm bringing. I'll be wearing my next belt on me for the class while using the Glock 26 with a tier one concealed holster, but I'm bringing my competition shooting belt along with me as well with a Blackhawk Omnivore holster. I have a cheap two magazine carrier with paddle attachment that works well with my EDC belt and some cheap magazine carriers with blade tech hardware on the belt. I have an IFAC on the back in case of any emergencies at the range. For clothing, I'm going to be wearing Altima boots. These boots are great for EDC as they aren't obnoxiously tactical, they blend in well. They are great for any weather condition, they're comfortable, you can move in them. Great for range and competition shooting days, I also will be wearing 511 EDC pants. These ones are designed to not be overly tactical looking. They blend in well, but they have these hidden side pockets that are big enough to fit a PM mag, which is pretty cool. This comes majorly in handy when you're running a more EDC concealed carry rig. As for these classes, you need a lot of magazines. You're going to be shooting all day and there isn't a ton of time to stack mags. I ended up carrying four to six magazines in my pockets, two in the mag holder, one in the gun. I'll also have multiple t-shirts and I brought a light sweatshirt as well. It's a good idea to bring rain gear and cold weather gear also. I didn't pack these because I could just borrow some from my brother. Guys make sure to bring a light sweatshirt. 
even if it's hot or something to cover your neck. The instructors were all wearing sweatshirts even though it was 80 degrees outside. This is because when you're outside for eight hours, you are going to get sunburned. I got burned pretty bad on my face and neck and I'm a Florida boy. I brought my warrior poet society hat. Having a hat is an absolute must to keep the sun off of your face. Bring sunscreen. I can't stress that enough. Of course, I brought eye pro and ear pro. I recommend having noise canceling earmuffs like these Walker razors. You will be shooting then stopping for instructional content, then shooting then stopping. Sometimes it's hard to hear the instructors if you're further back and the noise canceling muffs actually have adjustable volume. I found I could hear better by turning up the volume when standing further back. Also, the instructors will come up behind you and give you feedback while shooting. If you have the noise canceling earmuffs, you'll be able to hear them clearly versus passive muffs. I brought extra ear pro, but I didn't have a use for it. Don't forget the essentials. I brought toothbrush, extra underwear. I also brought a ton of audio and video recording stuff. I didn't get to use any of it. The classes are so action packed and information filled. I didn't have even a few minutes to be tinkering with a camera and gear. It just wasn't going to happen. I think also to respect privacy when I got there. Honestly, it's not a good idea to be recording. I really don't think you'll have the time to record anything either. Definitely nothing beyond a GoPro, if even that. For my carry-on, I usually travel with a laptop bag. The laptop bag has my work laptop, charger, and external hard drive, the stuff that I need for day-to-day -day business operations in my day-to-day -day life. I brought my Bible with me, which I always travel with. I like to read it on the plane, and a writing pad. People told me to bring a writing pad to record a lot of the instructional content. Guys, there is absolutely no time to do this during the classes. It's like drinking the instruction from a fire hose. I have no idea how anyone would find the time to take notes. Instead, I ended up typing out my thoughts at the airport on my flight home. For the actual class, you'll want to buy a case of water and some snacks for the day. You'll want to bring a packed lunch. The location you're at may or may not have a microwave, so don't bank on that. For me, I didn't bother packing food and instead bought it after my plane landed. So uh, that's it, guys. Hopefully there's some stuff in there that will help you make sure you're fully packed for the class. I'm sure I'm missing some stuff as well. Let me know if you bring anything additionally in the comments. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to Crackshot TV. The next two weeks, we'll be going over what I learned in Pistol and Pistol 2 classes. So stay tuned and have a great day.